Hi, SaaS users. Welcome. It's Allison and Al, and we're back again with a fantastic new feature addition to SaaS and really, really excited to show you all about this one. As usual, the this new feature that we're going to show you is available in all three tools. So we will walk through it in all three tools for you, but we really want to show you the full screen to begin with just so I can get a feel for it. So Without further ado, Al, tell us what this new feature addition is. Interactive charts using Keeper data. So instead of our sort of Keeper charts that we have at the moment, we have added interactive charts, which display the same information in our own charts. So interactive, so you can zoom in, pan them, select things, and sort of get the numbers from the charts. It's easier to explain by showing than it is to actually explain in words. Oh as most charts are. Exactly, and can't reiterate enough what Al just said about it is using the same Keepa data that you're all familiar with, um, that you're seeing in the Keepa panel to begin with, but we wanted to make it more user-friendly. So, so it is definitely a view that you know, but let's have Al break it down for us. What exactly do you have on screen? So, so what we've done, we've, we've, keep, we've taken the most common things from a Keepa chart, added them to our own chart, there's two charts. The top one shows you the sales rank and the different prices. And the bottom one shows you like the offer counts, the rating, and the review counts. If you hover over the chart, you also get a hint popping up showing you what the actual prices are for that position on the chart. So you move the mouse along or your finger on the phone, and this, this will follow you around. Wow, that seems a lot... Um, cleaner, I think, is the word I'm looking for than the Keepa charts that we're all so used to. Yeah, like, like I, I kind of hopping all over the place, aren't they? Yeah, like I absolutely love Keeper, and like I, I recommend it to everybody. But it, it can be a bit busy. <laughs> so what we've tried to do is make the sort of the chow charts as sort of succinct as possible, and make them work on diff, on the different sort of platforms that SaaS has. So we've optimized it for the mobile screen, we've optimized it for Chrome extension and, and the web app. It's, um, it's really less clutter on the screen, isn't it? Yeah. Like if we go to the, the, the sort of keeper version of this one, this is displaying the same information. It's the same information. You can see when you move along, things jump them down a little bit. So what we've just tried to do is make that a much simpler and sort of easier to follow. Because as you're doing analysis, the last thing you want to do is have to take your, your, your brain away from the big picture to really focus in on a chart. So this really makes it much easier to quickly identify the data points that they're looking for, doesn't it? Yeah. So I, well, so I'm not going to go into a full how to read keeper charts or how to read ch charts sort of tutorial. I'm just going to explain how ours work, what information we have. So on the top chart, you've got the Amazon price. In the legend, clicking on any, any of these in the legend will activate it or deactivate it on the chart. Like when you hover over one, it makes it a little bit bolder too, so you can sort of see it better. Now, we have the new one there, but we dis disable it by default. So just, you don't really need the new one that often, but it's, it's there for if you do want to use it. Then, so on the left sort of y-axis, that shows you the price. And on the right y-axis, that shows you the sales rank. So then on the bottom chart, so we've got the offer count, the rating, and the review count. So y-axis on the left is the offer count. Y-axis on the right is the, is the review count. Like we don't bother putting the rating on an axis because like it's, it's one to five. You don't really need it. Uh, like all... aside, aside from the rating um, being in the in the hint there, um, all the ax axes are really the same as you would see in a keeper chart, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So we put the rating in the hints because like what we've done here, we're trying to optimize it for screen space. So like you know, with SaaS, we work on say the Chrome extension, mobile, and the web app. So we've really worked hard to make it work on all of these all the different sort of resolutions. Yeah. Yeah. So. Along the bottom here, you have buttons for the sort of range that you want to display, which in a week, month, three months, a year, or all time. There's a new button that I've not seen on any of these charts before is the pan button. 
So if I turn that to three months, with the pan button, you can actually drag it. So you can actually go back in time on the chart. Okay. So, so there's two modes of dragging. There's the zoom mode. With zoom, you basically drag to select and it will zoom into that sort of date range. Then with pan mode, you drag it to go back in time or, or forward in time. I think pan, you can kind of liken it to a panoramic picture where it's, it's, a, big, it's a big bit of information, but you can go back and forth between everything. Yeah, exactly. Like on the sort of keep on the like with keeper chart, you can zoom in. So what you know you would do with that is use it all time. You'd go into zoom. You'd find the area you're most interested in, select it, and zoom in. With hours, you can do that, but you can also pan so, to, so you can then go back and forth from where you've zoomed in on. So it just, it makes it easier to get to different areas on the chart. So you don't have to zoom in, back out, and then zoom back into another time. No. To so come out of the zoom, you've got the reset zoom button up here. So clicking this just takes you back to whatever your sort of range view was before. That's awesome. And then um, I see that Keep is still there on the bottom. So if they want to access the Keep chart, they still can. Yeah, if you click on the Keep button, that will open the Keep chart up. That will take you straight to Keep on, on, on the same chart. Okay. So that, that's like when you, when you push the Keep a graph in SAS before it would take here. Now you can still get here just, just by clicking that button. Okay. If I go back to SAS, we'll do a search for something I know that's got a lot of history. I think everybody I know has sold this, this craft kit at one stage or another. So if I open this in the extension, so I'll scroll down our SAS window. So you can see with the chart, you can still use it in the extension at, at the narrower sort of width. It's wow. still sort of very sort of usable. But it's it's still still very visible. Because right now in the Keepa panel, you can't actually get that data as you're looking. That's just a static image in the Keepa panel, isn't it? Yeah, in the Keepa panel, it's, it's all a bit squashed up. Well, well now yeah, you, you can hover, get the prices. You can still, you, you, can, you can pan it, you can zoom in. Excellent. I select all. As you can see, when you're selecting all, there's a lot of data in here. But it is, it is still usable to an extent. And if you want to go into more detail, if you click on, you've got the open chart in a new window. This then takes you to like the full screen version of, of the same chart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll switch it to one time so you can see that like, the history on this product is crazy. Well, that was showing like the extension on to on the SAS, which is like when it's dot, when it's dots, we've got a bit more sort of screen space to play with. And like I'd always say, make it as wide as you're sort of comfortable with. But so that's like I've docked on the left. If you go to an Amazon page, even when you've got SAS embedded, so that's the old Keeper chart. Here's the, sort of the new charts. It is still usable even when it's embedded on the Amazon page. Well, like I'd recommend docking it and making it a bit wider if you can. But if you if you'd like to have you have you have you have SAS embedded, then yeah, you, you can still you can still use it. Yeah. And if you want to go into more detail again, you can always click there to open it in a in a, in a new window. Or like you said, go back to the keeper chart. So wow, that's fantastic. And then on the mobile, we'll show you a uh, mobile device here. How's it going to work on the mobile then? Because we don't obviously have the ability to click and drag and that type of stuff. Yeah, so the mobile, I'll say, works has exactly the same functionality, but the interface is slightly different. So let me let me sort of start up my mobile. Won't be a second. Okay, so, so with the mobile app, it works the sort of same way. So I'll just go to, in my history, so on the same product. I'll open up the Cap One Thousand. Right, so if I sort of scroll down here. We can see the chart on mobile. I'll shrink down the old keeper. So you can see the chart on mobile now. Same functionality, so you can do it by day, week, month, three months. If I just tap it and drag, we can see the sort of hints coming up with the different prices. So again, that's a, that's a tap and drag on there. You can either just tap it or, or, or drag it, yeah. And you can see we haven't got the buttons now for panning and zooming. So to pan, 
you do it a two finger drag. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. Obviously, you can't see me. And to zoom, it's it's a it's a pinch zoom. So you, you, you as you do with like photos, you just pinch it to zoom in. Okay. And zoom back out, and you've got your reset zoom as well. Two finger drag and pinch to zoom. Two yeah. finger drag or pan, pinch to zoom. Yeah. So if you wanted to see, so a bigger version of the mobile, you click on the new window button, opens it up again. You now just switch it to landscape, and you, you've got. Well, a, big, a bigger chance is it easier to read. Wow. I mean, when you're out doing RA, flip your phone sideways and you got that sort of view of, of all the history that you want to see, that's invaluable. Yeah, so even with this, if I go to all, all time, you can see there's a lot of data on there, but it is actually usable. Still usable data. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you, Gavin, for posting on Twitter. <laughs> uh, so. I'll, I'll just take it back to a year. And then to get back to your sort of SAS analysis, you just click you click the back button in the top left. Okay. And then you sort of then you, you, you back to normal analysis. Okay. So I think the chat's usable as it is in in portrait, in portrait mode. But if you do want to actually really sort of look at a bigger time scale, then you, you can open it in a new window and do it for full landscape. Okay. okay. Excellent. So yeah, really, I mean, I hate to say that's it because that's pretty massive, everybody. That's that's the latest update really in the vein of, we want you to have the data in front of you. We, that's, always, that's always our MO here at Celeramp is to put the data in front of you. And I think without a doubt, everybody would agree that these charts do exactly that. It's, it's something that you're familiar with. It's all the data that you know, even colorations and, and things like that that you're comfortable with with Keepa but we're just making it a better view, an improved view, less clutter, easier for you to see the information you need. Available on all three tools, obviously, like we said, like Al just walked us through here. So not to worry, no matter what tool you use, you'll be able to use these charts. The pan and zoom, a whole new feature that, that although you can zoom on Keepa, you can't pan on Keepa. So I think that's really gonna be a game changer for people that are um, wanting to to go back and forth through a time period and really kind of look at look more in depth at the prices that the prices the the buy box the etc that you're that you're seeing on that chart, and then of course um, what I was just pointed out is really you don't have to leave the screen where you're doing your analysis. You can if you want to. You can always launch the charts into another window, but you don't have to leave the screen that you're on in whatever uh, tool that you're in because. Uh, obviously, with the Keepa charts, yes, it's great to have that snapshot in the Keepa panel, but it always launches in another window. So, um, so charts will allow you to literally stay in the mobile app, in the in the extension, or in the web app if you choose. So, Al, I think there's one thing you need to let people know about the setup of the charts, right? Yeah. What what we're going to do is, in that moment, if you've got the Keepa charts enabled. We're going to replace it with the new Keeper chart, but you will still be able to access your Keeper chart in your SAS settings. So there'll be two panels, but I'd recommend just using the new, the new one. And we're going to be calling the new one Charts. The old one will still be Keeper. Yeah, we wanted a better name, but I think Charts is what it is. That's all the further we got with that idea. So, Okay, so again, if you want to go in and reactivate the, the Keeper panel that you're used to, no problem, we can turn that on again. Otherwise, um, charts will be the default, so. All right, having said that, everybody, um, go out, have a play with it. Let us know what you think. Uh, email us at support at selleramp.com if you have any questions. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Vimeo, wherever you might wanna go. Uh, let us know what you think. We really would love to see feedback from people and uh, uh, also understand other ways of using it and other things you might like to see. So we're always open to suggestions here, so. And with, having said that, um, that's it, everybody, I think. So happy right. sourcing. Enjoy your charts, everybody. And Just we'll see you next time around. Bye, Tom.